Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about algorithmic thinking. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, am I a bad software engineer if I can not implement sorting algorithms from the top of my head? Nope. I would say that you're not. Uh, that's kind of like asking it's trying it, it's very similar to asking are you a bad software developer if you use stack overflow or are you a bad software developer if you can't implement a a regex that checks if something is a phone number from memory or something similar there are these things that i like to call they 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 are more trivia things than anything else if that makes sense uh, and they, these are things that are usually very popular in coding interviews, where I, I would say it's a 50-50 split usually. Uh, it's a, Whenever you apply for any software job, uh, it's a 50-50 chance that you're going to get either coding challenges that are more project-based, where they give you like a project such as, uh, let's say, Java. You get a Java project that, uh, and then you're, they add like code, like a half implementation or some bugs or something like that and you're supposed to fix it right or you, sh you send then you send it in that's the one that's one version of a code test the other version is usually they give you like a platform or some very more algorithmic like lead code caddies like these different type of computer sciencey problems and then they want you to solve it and the sorting algorithm would be an example of the latter it would be uh, I mean, if somebody asks you to implement an insertion sort or a bubble sort or whatever, uh, that that's uh, it's it's the thing is, these are very popular things to ask someone in an interview, and at the same time, it's the sort of thing that if you are a real software developer, you will know that the vast majority of software developers don't know how to do like how to do this i mean if you ask me right here right now to implement a a sorting algorithm i might from memory be able to implement a bubble sort maybe because it's such a simple algorithm but if you ask me to i don't know well maybe maybe a merge sort it's so that's still sort of i like, yeah, it probably would work uh, for me, but like a lot of these things, I would have to like uh, if you did an I mean an insertion sort or things like that uh, to make sure that I have the whole thing right. I would have to go and read up a little bit on it. Uh, but uh, that that's the thing, right? The reason why I feel unsure about it is because it's something that is simply completely irrelevant to for for you to have in memory. It's something that where you the, the the value in knowing about these different sorting algorithms l does not lie in the fact that you can from memory remember how to make one of these implementations the value is that you understand how they work and above all else their the, the logic behind them the 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 time complexity and the memory usage i you, the, you've probably heard about big o notations these algorithms are usually very popular in computer science courses due to the fact that like, they're as I can mean sorting is a very generic problem it's completely language agnostic it works in like it, you can pick any language and you'll be able to like teach it and it highlights without extra fluff without almost any because that's the thing you can learn a sorting algorithm without knowing anything about software structure and code cleanliness like all of this other more advanced well i'm not saying advanced stuff but yeah all the sort of stuff that you kind of have to know about in order to be a professional software developer so it's a very good way to introduce students and people into thinking about things such as memory usage and execution um, like time complexity and so forth because these things do matter but the, it's sort of, I would say, think of it more as sort of learning how to, like taking your driver's license. So when you take your driver's license, you're going to study quite a bit and you're going to learn quite a lot of stuff in order to pass the exam. But after a few years of driving, it's very likely that you will have forgotten quite a lot of the stuff that you have 
read since I mean it's natural it's the same thing with going to school if you're not refreshing your understanding of these concepts you're not gonna have all that m much memory from it right but you're still going to be able to drive your car and that's kind of the thing with it's the same thing with a sorting algorithm if you're using it continuously then sure you're going to be able to remember it but most of the time you're not and it's perfectly fine to not be able to remember how to implement a sorting algorithm I mean it, the, the the thing the, that's not what the focus is about and this is one of those reasons why uh, it's I'm not saying all companies do this but quite a lot of companies they will give you a coding challenge where you can sit at home or like you can do it like you can perform the coding challenge at your own leisure or a within like as long as you can solve the problem or sort of solve the problem they're fine with it even if you have to go and look things up because that is what reality looks like when you work as a software developer you have access to the internet and the, like external resources and so forth it really comes down to whether or not you can solve the problem it doesn't it's not as important that you can solve it from memory there are absolutely interviews where they will expect you to be able to pull things from memory and you might have to go and read up on things i mean i've i've heard many things things about people who want to do the google interviews or things like that where that might be the case but you're not going to be you're not you can't label yourself as a bad software developer because you can't remember how to implement a sorting algorithm because in theory i could ask i mean if i really wanted to uh, i can go to every single software developer i know regardless of seniority and try to figure out a question that i can ask that person where they're not going to be able to answer me because there are so many things i could pos i could ask them now a sorting algorithm to be fair is something that is quite common so sure more people would probably know about it but I hope that you understand that it, there is in like, what I'm trying to say is basically that there are things that you do continuously and these are the things that are usually very important like these are the things that we use in order to determine if you're good or bad as, at software development and these are the daily things like just being able to produce code that is working and well maintained etc etc and then there are things that are more theoretical and you should learn about them but it's not something that no anybody's going to expect that you can like l take from memory it's like asking a lawyer to know everything about every piece of law there is they it's not or a doctor it's the same thing it's just not feasible if if you ever get into a situation where you need to implement a sorting algorithm you have access to reference material and what matters is that you know how to use that reference material to then create the implementation that is actually working. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, you're not a bad software developer because you can't implement a sorting algorithm for at the top of your head. Uh, what matters, and that, that's not usually the focus of teaching people about a sorting algorithm. It really is more focused on understanding how the computer works and what tasks that you can, like what, basically what day is, uh, is code you write and how that code impacts the execution, execution time on the CPU and the memory usage. These are the, what the big O notations are all about and sorting is a popular way of doing that because it's a problem that is very good to use in order to explain how something like a linear search algorithm is going to execute in a certain amount of time and use a certain amount of memory versus say, a bubble sort or a merge sort or whatever sort, a quick sort, etc, etc. Or how a the Fibonacci, Fibonacci algorithm can create exponentially growing or a, 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 um, uh, um, <laughs> execution time where you can, even a simple in implementation of it is going to take a lot of time and the reason why we want you to know about stuff and uh, about this stuff is because if you don't know about that stuff you might create implementations that are very very unperformant but it doesn't really matter so much if you know how to write the algorithms from scratch without looking something up that's not what's most important that's really only something that you do in an interview where they don't give you reference material but in the real world you never do it most developers have gone their entire career without ever having to implement their own production implementation of a sorting algorithm have a great day